Captain Nathanson. Good, hey, good morning. Good to be here. Did you ever meet him? Did you ever spend time at the grotto? I did. Um, you know, growing up in Los Angeles in the 80s, there were three places that you wanted to go. Dodgers Stadium to watch the Dodgers, the Forum to watch the Lakers, and the Playboy Mansion to uh, party there. And I finally got a chance. It wasn't until around 2009, um, and I've been there three, four times since then. It wasn't really the same. It wasn't what you were expecting, you know, especially at that point. Uh, the parties were still there. The women were still there. But, I mean, it wasn't quite debaucherous. Uh, Hugh was there, but I, I talked to him twice, and for the most part, he would retire back to his uh, room, and he wouldn't really mingle am among people. But it was very nice. The first interview I ever did with him was him and Bill Cosby together. Um, so that's a, that's a weird <laughs> Oh, my God. Who, who would have thought at the end that uh, Hugh Hefner would be the moral one in that conversation? I know, right? But it was always – I went there a couple times for to talk about the Playboy Jazz Festival, which uh, Bill Cosby – through and they you know they did that together um and so i would interview both of them together and be me and a couple other radio stations um one of the worst interviews of my life because of bill cosby not because of hugh hafner uh but bill cosby was just in a mood and it was me and three other women and he just did not like me at all bill cosby did not and just gave me you know told me my questions were horrible and went on to the next person wow Ooh, that's so, kind of brutal it's a whole other yeah. story do, now do you, are you invited do you have to be invited to go you can't just show up as media and just you know <laughs> you know you can't just show up um it's it's hard to even get in there because it's a house you know in the middle of uh, near beverly hills um, right outside Beverly Hills, uh, and with a really long driveway. And, you, and for the most part, you can't park there. You have to park somewhere else, and a shuttle has to take you onto the property. Um, so you have to be invited. And, you know, I, I was at the party there with Steven Tyler once. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Got to talk to him and go see the monkeys and, you know, the grotto. And, you know, they've got a whole zoo there. It's an interesting place, and it's all going to be torn down now. So, uh, so think about 1953. And the social norms in 1953, imagine going to your mother and saying, can I borrow $1,000? I want to start a magazine and put naked women in there. His, from what I understand, his Protestant conservative mother, too. Yeah. And that, it, was, it was that kind of upbringing that he was born in 1926 in Chicago to two Protestant conservative parents. And that upbringing and what he saw of the world, which made him wanted to change things. That said, hey, everybody's really repressed here. We've got to loosen up. We've got to have a little more fun. And talk about sex and look at naked women. And that's why he wanted to start this magazine. And his mom gave him the thousand bucks, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then that episode or that uh, issue, the first one with Marilyn Monroe, went on to sell 50,000 copies. <laughs> um, and everybody said, hey, we got something here. But you look at, I mean, you look at today where women take their clothes off because it's Tuesday. Right, for, just 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 for for fun. Who would have well, thought? And, and, th and that's the that's the whole debate here. Is Hugh Hefner and Playboy good for women or bad for women? You know, is he a chauvinist who objectified them, or and ushered that into the culture, or not? A lot of people, a lot of women will say the women had their choice, and that's they were given the choice to be sexual. They allowed themselves. Nobody forced them into these magazines. They yeah. they and that, that's why a lot of celebrities like to do it as well because they got to hey. I'm, I'm sexual, I want to show myself off, um, but, you know, the other side of it is you have a lot of men just leering at women and, you know, whether or not that's good for society. And no. they, didn't, didn't it go, they, didn't they, a couple of years ago, they said they weren't going to do the all nudity and then they reinstated it again? They were trying to, I mean, the magazine fell on tough times with the internet and with porn readily available everywhere. Um, and there's a debate also as to whether or not Playboy is actually porn right. or not. Um, but you know, they, they decided, we're going to change things. We're going to try to get the, the millennial audience, I guess, and take the, the images out. That didn't work. That didn't last too long. But, but you know, growing up, people would joke, I, I read it for the articles. Turns out it had some, it had some great articles in there. It had uh, fantastic articles, which they started uh, nine years later, I think. In 1962 was the first one. A uh, big interview with Miles Davis was the first Playboy interview. Um, and also uh, writers that they would publish. Ray Bradbury, Joseph Heller, Margaret Atwood, writer of The Handmaid's Tale, had fiction in there. Jack Kerouac, uh, Kurt Vonnegut. 
so many of the biggest writers, they published fiction in Playboy because, remember, you know, back in, in those days, that's where a lot of uh, people would publish their fiction. They would write short stories and stuff, and the, the people would see it because Playboy at that point was selling a million uh, copies a month. So that's if you wanted to be seen, yeah. you had to go where people were reading it, and the people were reading Playboy. Is it still around today? Where, I, I don't I mean... Uh, yeah, it's still around. It's still around, and it makes a billion dollars a year. In, in that's not just in the magazine, which is published in 20 countries, but in licensing right. and all kinds of things. The the Playboy uh, name and company is worth a billion dollars a year. His son, his younger son uh, Cooper, is the one who's running it. Right yeah, now. yeah, a and billion are? dollars in like keychains at truck stops. <laughs> and you mentioned you mentioned that the mansion's been sold, right? The mansion's been sold. So last year, they tried to do this deal for a while, but I think it officially was done last year, where they sold it for $80 million. I don't know if Hefner and, and Playboy itself needed money or what exactly the case was there, but they sold it for $80 million with the stipulation that he got to live there till the end of his life. There you go. 90, 89 at the time, and you know, not in good health. He didn't want to move. He wanted to stay there. Um, and, and the guy who bought it basically just wants the land, and I think he bought the lot next door as well. Mm. And from what I understand, he's going to tear the whole thing down and you know, build whatever kind of monstrosity he wants. Jason Nathanson, you always ask good questions here. I don't know what Bill Cosby's talking about. <laughs> Have a good